Good evening. It is Monday, June 1st, 6.30, Kearney Board of Alderman meeting. I will officially call this meeting to order. Shirley, have you had a chance to take roll? I have taken roll, and everybody is present. You do have a quorum. Great. Thank you. We'll move on to the consent agenda. Board in front of you have the consent agenda. Any questions or discussion on the items placed on the consent agenda this evening? There are no questions or discussion. Can we entertain a motion to pass the consent agenda? I make a motion to pass the consent agenda. I second that. All right, we'll have Jim take roll, please. Alderman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Holt. Aye. Alderman Steiner. Aye. And Alderman Barger. Aye. Vote unanimous, Mr. Mayor. Great, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Mayor's remarks. Uh, this evening under Mayor's remarks, I do want to communicate the update that I'm sure everybody is, is hopefully aware of, that the Clay County Public Health Order has moved to step two in phase two uh, of the recovery plan. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that our city parks are finally able to host teams uh, on the fields that have been waiting to practice and uh, that as of today, our playgrounds and shelter houses are open as well. Uh, just a reminder that as our businesses continue to open, uh, I encourage you know, all, all of our residents to re-engage their favorite restaurants in Kearney and venture out safely, uh, maintaining your social distancing and wearing masks if, if you have them. So uh, all good news, we continue to, uh, to hopefully move in the right direction and uh, I feel that we're able to do that because of uh, the, the city and our residents being smart. So that concludes my mayor's remarks, and we'll move on to the administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, would simply like to re uh, report that the city staffing uh, has uh, returned to normal, uh, both out in the field and um, so here at City Hall. This is the first day that we, uh, uh, we were all here, uh, and... Um, we are uh, still uh, having the lobby closed. However, customers requiring assistance or needing to meet the city staff uh, will be accommodated and given limited building access. So we're still taking a slow approach to that. Uh, we are planning uh, to come together on the June 15th meeting. Uh, I think there could be some social distancing done and possibly uh, board members uh, especially those at, at risk should rem, remain isolated and attend by Zoom, but uh, we'd like to try to start having uh, uh, some, uh, some semblance in uh, City Hall. Uh, got uh, spacing, we can we've, we figure out we've got uh, room for 12 chairs to be spaced out so, um, for, for a public attendance, and so we'll uh, try to go along those lines. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. All right. Uh, we have no requests for public requests or petitions this evening. We have uh, no requests for public hearings this evening. And that will move us on to old business. We do have an item to discuss under old business, item 7A, the I-35 holdings request to rezone uh, that property. And at this time, I will turn it over to our city attorney, Mr. Brian Hall. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, pursuant to a judgment of the Clay County Circuit Court, a final judgment on count one, uh, I have been directed to announce on the record that that court has entered a judgment for the plaintiffs on count one of that pending lawsuit that the protest involving in this particular agenda item was insufficient and a two thirds vote is not required on that ordinance. And therefore, because the vote is tied, it was tied at the time when the, uh, before, the mayor will be allowed to vote to break the tie and his vote will count. And that's at the specific direction of the circuit court in their final judgment. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Eldridge, do you have anything to add to that? Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, the uh, packet has been prepared uh, to reflect 
that those uh, enclosures that were submitted to the board on January the 21st. And that includes the applicant's submittal, the staff report, the proposed ordinance that was considered on January the 21st, uh, the planning and zoning minutes of January the 13th, and a January 15th letter from the applicant's engineer, Ron Calger of AGC Engineers, offering to limit the blasting and rock crushing operations to a four year period. Uh, written correspondence that was not previously uh, presented and received through January 16th. Uh, and of course you've received things after that, but we're restoring it back as pursuant to the court order that, uh, that, the, um, that the judge asked us to roll it back in time. And that's what we're trying to do. At the January 21st board meeting, Bill number uh, 2-2020, an ordinance amending chapter 400 of the Municipal Code, the Comprehensive Zoning Regulations of Kearney, Missouri, rezoning approximately 128 acres to MP, Industrial Plan District, and approving uh, a conditional use permit for quarry activities for a period of seven years was presented and read by title only. Mm -hmm. Voting for the motion was Alderman Holt and Alderman Barger. Voting against the motion was Alderman Spencer and Alderman Steiner. The vote was a two to two tie, and by court order, the mayor is directed to cast his vote on the first reading. Before I would uh, cast my vote, I have prepared a statement, and I will read that statement, and then I will cast my vote. Per the order of Judge Janet Sutton, I am required to break the tie-breaking vote from the first reading of this application request. The decision was not made fast, and one, I see many pros and cons as any decision has. This is a decision I found myself on both sides. Likely for every person for this application, there's a person against it. In preparing myself to cast this tie-breaking vote, I have reviewed the entire record, the applicant's original submittal and subsequent filings, staff report, minutes of the December 9th planning and zoning hearing, the minutes of the December 16th board meeting, and the letters and emails that have been submitted during the hearing process. I pay careful attention to the planning and zoning commission's minutes of January 13th, 2020, where they recommended approval and imposed three additional more stringent restrictions than the previously recommended 18 conditions in the original staff report. Restrictions were intended to address the issues identified by the Planning and Zoning Commission and were acknowledged by the developers being acceptable. This includes lowering and limiting the hours of operation and limiting any blasting and rock processing time, limit of the truck route by no access to Petty Road, Watson Drive, no access to 19th Street East on Watson Drive, and access via Nation Road north to 92 Highway, and access to Watson Drive roundabout then west on 19th Street after the interstate is constructed. Limits on storage of explosives, none stored on site overnight, and additional requirements on sound screening. On January 15th of this year, leading up to our normal board meeting to be held on January 21st, the developers made an extraordinary submittal offering to bind themselves to a four-year limitation on quarrying and rock crushing. While the special use permit would run for seven years as requested, a shorter time frame of four years would limit the querying operating operations to a year or so longer than the proposed interchange construction. They are likely going to need to blast and crush rock for construction, much like we did last summer for our new sewer line in the same area that went northwest to the hills of Westwood subdivision and caused not one concern or complaint from the public. I do not believe the board, nor even the public, had adequate time to properly digest this very substantial change in the request. Also, I feel it is important to understand that this is leveling an area to obtain a desirable grain for development. It will be unlike any query you see in the area because the end result is not a query, rather a reclamation, not the same concept, long-term goal, or plan. The Kearney community overwhelmingly supported construction of our new interchange at 19th Street. The construction will take at least two years to build and will run concurrently with the applicant's four-year time frame in the exact same area. We hope that the fill material for the interchange will come from our local quarry 
and not have to be trucked in from a, another city, saving the taxpayers money on the cost and keeping the traffic of our neighborhoods down. This project will cost taxpayers over $20 million. This is the single largest investment by taxpayers in the history of Kearney and will likely always be the biggest investment in our community. Why will we not support maximizing the ground surrounding the area to generate additional revenue from the same? Maybe, just maybe, we can pay off our debts early and continue to invest in our community's aging infrastructure. It is vital for Kearney to be successful long term. We must continue to support the ability to grow our commercial tax base. This is not only important for the city of Kearney, this is vital for our school district and vital for the Kearney Fire and Rescue Protection District. This is not the first time the city of Kearney has had to make what appears to be a tough or unpopular decision. The Shops of Kearney project had strong objections from its neighbors that had the rooms full of citizens. Because the mayor and board at that time believed in the long-term benefits of this project, it was passed. I believe that that project has helped favorably transform our community. If the city of Kearney would have pushed pause and stopped any development that had opposition, where would we be today? Our other developments that have had opposition include the Greenfield and Jamestown Village area, the Southbrook Parkway extension, which includes where my home currently is. It is vital for Kearney to continue to be in pro-development and to support our community's wants and demands. I do not want Kearney to have the reputation of I've got mine, now the door is shut. We also cannot forget the opposition that we had for the Hills of Westwood and River Meadows subdivision. After the construction period of getting the subject ground vertical construction ready, I'm confident our community will support and enjoy the businesses we hope this ground will attract and see a beautiful development at our new entrance to our city soon. No doubt there will be some growing pains. But as mentioned above, I feel our staff, our Planning and Zoning Commission, the Board of Aldermen, and the applicant have all agreed on a satisfactory plan. Approval of this ordinance would allow the applicant to move forward with their process, with their, their application process with the State of Missouri. The applicant has brought forward an opportunity to turn non-productive, nuisance property into a tax-generating center of commerce for our wonderful city. I vote yes to break the tie on the first reading of the proposed ordinance and encourage the board to unanimously vote to approve the ordinance on its second reading this evening. I look forward to a great interchange project and a new development in our community. Mr. Mayor, uh, I will read on the second title as you direct. By title only, please. An ordinance amending Chapter 400 of the Municipal Code, the Comprehensive Zoning Regulations of Kearney, Missouri, rezoning approximately 128 acres to M-P Industrial Plan District and approving a conditional use permit for quarry activity for a period of seven years. Our board, do we entertain a motion? So moved. Second. All right, Mr. Uh, City Administrator, take roll, please. Um, Mr. Ma Mr. Mayor, uh, are you going to call for discussion? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, is there any discussion from the board? I, I do. Here. Okay, Go, uh, you have a floor. This is Marie. This is Marie. Yeah, um, Marie. Mayor, I would like to re. I would like to reaffirm my vote against the rock quarry, and I'm directing it to the two mailers that all residents received against the office attacking me to run me out of office. A lot of this says a lot about Craig Porter's character. And I would beg that the mayor would allow me to respond to the two attacks that were received to all the residents. If I may read the response to those. Uh, you have the floor. The first one being taxpayer funded backroom deals uncovered uh, recently sent by Forward Carney is clearly misleading. Here are the facts. The Shops of Carney Tax Increment Financing, TIF, was approved by the Board of Aldermen in 2010. I was first elected to the board in 2014. My votes were merely to honor the city's existing contractual obligation 
to reimburse the developer, nothing more, nothing less. The second mailing, show me the money, recently sent by Forward Carney, needs clarification. Alderman had not had a pay increase since 2007 at $70 a meeting. I asked for consideration of pay increase, presented to the mayor, then the Board of Aldermen for $100, it passed. The board cannot raise their meeting fee during their current term of office. Meeting fees increase only can take effect following the next election. The late mayor, Bill Dane, proposed an increase of pay of $200 effective June 2020 to bring alderman pay and the mayor's pay closer in line to what is considered standard pay, but still not as much as other municipalities of our size pay their aldermen. Notice of increase was given when the budget was presented and passed by the whole board. That's all I have to say, Mayor. Thank you. Any other discussion on the applicant and the applicant's request? Yes, Mr. Mayor. On the applicant, uh, he's making an, uh, a motion to develop this piece of land. Eventually, it's going to get developed, whether it gets developed now or later. The best time to try to work with him is why he's trying to do it. We know that it's, it's going to get developed sometimes. So the best thing to do is try to mitigate it. That's why I worked harder to go and talk with Mr. Porter about reducing that time and getting it to a four-year term instead of a, a seven-year term. And why I worked hard at trying to get him to move the crusher down to the lower level where behind the roll of trees and get him to enclose around the crusher to uh, mitigate some of that noise and dust that may occur. He agreed to do so. I thought that was the best action that we could do because I was aware that there could be litigation that comes with this. And that is why I, I moved to, to uh, approve with those extra conditions that the builder was willing, or the developer was willing to do. Any other discussion or comments from the board? Yes. And this is Jerry Spencer, and I will continue to respect and reflect the voices of my constituents in Ward 1. I have yet to receive a single I on this from any of the people. They all were negative responses, so... I am here to be their voice, and that is what I will continue to be. My vote is still nay. Okay. You could read by title only. Uh, that has been done. And, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. And so, uh, so if we can so, entertain a motion uh, roll, for the second reading. Uh, roll. We got a motion. We got the motion. Uh, all right. Roll call vote. Let's take roll. Roll call vote. Alderman Spencer. Nay. Alderman Holt? Aye. Alderman Steiner? Nay. Alderman Barger? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the vote is two to two, and yeah. you can break this tie. I will vote yes to break the tie for the second reading. Mr. Mayor, that, that is three to two vote, and the bill becomes an ordinance. All right, great. We'll move on to the new business. Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, or excuse me, yes, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, uh, you have, are seeking the board's approval of reappointments to the Board of Zoning Adjustments. That is a board that meets very infrequently, and uh, uh, these are all reappointments to terms that have expired, and they are Rue Lovett. Her terms expires June the 1st, 2023. Bill Duncan, Term expires June 1st, 2024, and Jim Thomas, his term would expire June 1st, 2025. We need a motion from the board authorizing. Yeah, are there any questions or, or comments from the board on uh, my request to reappoint uh, these individuals that continue to, to serve us very well? I believe these are all quality individuals. They have done a good job in the past and I expect they will do a great job in the future. If there's no other questions or discussions, can we entertain a motion? I make a motion. I'll second. All right, Jim, if you could take roll, please. 
Alderman Spencer? Aye. Alderman Holt? Aye. Alderman Steiner? Aye. Alderman Barger? Aye. The vote is unanimous for the reappointments of Rue Lovett, Bill Duncan, and Jim Thomas to the Board of Zoning Adjustments. Great. And uh, I would just like to take a quick second to publicly thank those three for their continued service. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful they will accept the reappointment. All right, that moves uh, to Alderman discussion. We'll start with Alderman Spencer. Well, with tomorrow being election day and an unusual <clears throat> coming in June instead of April, I just want to remind everyone that it is election day and please get out there and vote. Alderman Holt. Uh, I'm just with Jerry. Uh, this is kind of unique. It's usually a little cooler. Uh, it's going to be hot tomorrow, but I do encourage everybody to go out and vote and uh, make sure to wear your mask and and uh, present your yourself but in a good manner, even though it's going to be pretty hot and we're all doing things a little different this year. But uh, go have fun and go vote. Okay. Alderman Steiner. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate Jerry and Dan, but also to let everyone know your poll workers will look a little bit different. They will be wearing masks and face shields and they will not handle your ID. They will ask you to place it on the poll pad yourself and they will let you go away with your own free stylus. You don't have to return it. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, just an added bonus to go vote. Okay. Uh, you know, be with the free stylus. <laughs> Thank you for that information. No All right. pencil needed. That's right. <laughs> Barger? Um, I just add my voice to the other three that voting that it's never more important than today to, to do your do your civic duty and vote. So hopefully yes. we'll see everybody at the polls tomorrow. Yes. All right. Great. Well, with that, that concludes our meeting. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So I make moved. a motion to adjourn. I second it. All right, Jim, take roll. Alderman Spencer? Aye. Alderman Holt? Aye. Alderman Steiner? Aye. Alderman Barger? Aye. What's unanimous, Mr. Mayor? All right, that concludes our meeting. Everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.